Hello and welcome to another Warcraft 3 audio commentary. Today we will be watching the sixth and final game of the show match. Between Hawk spawning in as the light blue um dead in the lower left part of Turtle Rock versus the mighty undead tracker in the top left undead. Uh, the map is Turtle Rock as we just kind of mentioned. And that was my hype. <laughs> That was a hype and true hype, hype, hype. Um, anyway, game number six. Indeed, we're gonna see these guys having some fun, probably. Turtle Rock, what an interesting map this is. Uh, what will we see? And that is a good question. I, my prediction here is Archmage. I, it's, it's boring prediction, it's a standard prediction. I'm predicting Archmage. Um, predicting rifles, riflemen. I don't know if Hawk wants to do- I don't know if Hawk's the kind of player who goes for the expansion on this map, or the tech on this map, or the tier 2 expansion, which is a pretty cool strategy. I don't know how viable it still is, but it was good there for a little while, which I thought was fun. Um, but what will we see? I don't know. Early scouts. You always early scout on this map. We did notice, though, that he didn't go for the super supremely early scout. Uh, he was just kind of like, you know, if it is close spawn, I don't feel like abusing it. It is a show match after all, and I don't even know if that's something that's good anymore. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we might have missed something that was key. The Undead may have played the, the base a little bit different build. Uh, he might have built a Zig quicker. May have done that. I, you know, I don't know. When you're playing Ted Fiends, you get the Zig actually pretty quickly. Uh, a lot of times, what I, I've seen players do is build their base so that the Ziggurat's like behind another building that's kind of blocked and you can't actually really do anything. Doesn't see it, we don't see it every game, but you can actually do certain builds that actually completely nullify human cheese on this map, even if it is close spawn. Uh, don't ask me exactly what they are because I don't know how to explain them or what they really exactly are, but there you go. We are going to see peasant production. Has it stopped? It looks like it stopped. Uh, if it does stop, no, he's picking it back up. If it does stop completely, though, at some point, uh, then that's definitely not going to be an expansion build. There is no shredder on this map, so that's one of the big downsides for playing on this map. One of the cool things about this map, though, as a human, is that you have a lot of ability to kind of go for those four greens, and that means you can take some creative paths. And also you can do kind of multi-creeping if you want to with your militia on your side of the map and run your army all the way to the undead side of the map or whatever if it's split the way it is right now. Uh, but what we're seeing is the undead death knight, is he going to try to get that last hit on the water elemental? He certainly would like to get really both of these low HP water elementals. A lot of the times you see the water elementals getting denied. Uh, he did go ahead and get one, and he got the second, so that's 84 experience. That's a pretty nice place to be on this map. Usually you don't get that much experience this early on as the death knight. Uh, so that was a pretty, that went pretty reasonably for both players though. Uh, I don't think, yeah, Hawk didn't lose any of the experience of the creeps. And it definitely is starting to look a lot like an expansion play. He is still Town Hall, he is still pumping out peasants, speed building a farm. He definitely needs the resources. He maybe messed up a little bit there with his time microing over here, those water elementals that were low on HP. I think he wanted to deny them, uh, but he ultimately just didn't quite manage it. Are we seeing the super aggressive play? We're actually not seeing the super aggressive play, I don't believe, because uh, we only have one fiend out right now. Normally would have two, maybe having a third on the way. He's already teching though. Uh, so that is a bit of an adaptation, maybe, maybe? I think this is a game, well, this is really a map that he could have gone that if he wanted to for the super aggressive play, but he didn't. Uh, just mixing up a little bit, maybe trying to metagame Hawk a little because it's the last game. I don't know. We're gonna see if he's gonna be able to pick up the coil. He's not gonna be able to quite get the steal on the Forest Troll Berserker. A little bit of a shame, but that does mean the Archmage is gonna get tier three or level three fairly quickly. We do have a peasant going down. Peasants are primary your focus here. Getting the creeps is pretty good too because you really want to have level 2 and you also want to deny level 3 as long as possible. And he was able to get the steal on that ogre bringing him up to 157 experience which is nice but again he hasn't really done much to delay this expansion whatsoever. And this is a dream for the human. Uh, the question is kind of going to be, what will we see the undead do at this point? Does he go for a straight tech into tier three and try to do some kind of destro push to force the human into massing towers? Possibly. Does he decide instead to go for the wagon fiend push that we've seen several times in the past, which is a pretty effective, but again, may not be that great because he has definitely gone for the, 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 the slow play here. Uh, he didn't do much to stop this. He's not coming back down. He's decided to start creeping. My my guess here is that he wants to kind of go for the mid uh, game play, which is going to be that early Destro push, that early
purely tech push, maybe with meat wagons, but whatever it is, I'm expecting it to be tier three just from the way he's playing, saying, okay, I'm gonna just take this early bit of time. I can't really do a whole lot. I just need to get experience so I can make a really strong push coming up uh, at the certain timing, probably around the nine minute mark, which is gonna be in about four minutes. Uh, but will we see that? I, I really don't know. Although he is picking up a sacrificial skull, so everything I just said could be totally completely bollocks. <laughs> We'll find out. Oh, Fiend is actually gonna get surrounded very quickly. He's gonna go for the coil on it, but it's just not gonna save the poor guy. He's gonna die. He might be able to get a footman with that coil though, uh, because when you when you coil that, that footman had to stay a little bit longer, and in fact, he ended up trading a Fiend for a footman because of the coil, which is better than, you know, just losing a Fiend, but not really that great in the first place. You don't really wanna be trading Fiends for footmen. Footmen are just gold. They don't cost very much. They only cost us like 120 gold, uh, maybe 130, 135. I don't exactly remember off the top of my head. I should, but I don't. Uh, whereas fiends are 215 and uh, I believe 40 wood. So that is 215 gold. It's, so they cost more than, and they cost lumber, which lumber is kind of an, a precious resource, especially for undeads. Uh, well, it, it, because it, undeads often want to get the armor upgrade for their units, their ranged units in particular, and that just costs so much wood. Uh, Frostworms cost a lot of wood as well, uh, and tech just costs a lot of wood. So we're definitely not seeing that late game push from the undead. We will probably still see uh, some kind of a timing push, but maybe not. He might go straight for it. He might just say, so you know, whatever, I got a sacrificial skull, I'm just going to go. Uh, I don't know how he could do that. I mean, looking at his base, he doesn't have a lot of defense there. So, so I, I really don't know. I mean, we could see him lose the same thing he lost to last time, which is where the human player just goes straight to that base, and the undead goes for the human expansion, but he just can't defend his base well enough. Even though he's there with his lich or something, and his ghouls fighting and attacking, he just loses too many acolytes and too much gold and too much economy, and gets too far behind. Again, one of the big things the human is striving for in this game is getting to the late game, because in the late game, the human has the advantage in terms of army power and army size and economy if if the game goes well for them so that's why the undead has to stop that we're seeing now the human is just now beginning to put the keep tech into play uh so that is pretty late it's at 722 in the game right now kind of want to see that a little bit earlier from the human if it's going as well for him as he is but i guess he's thinking you know it's going so well for me i just don't need to you know take any uh, unnecessary risks just keep on making footmen just keep on defending them uh and even if the undead gets some experience i'm still ahead in experience so it's not a big deal and that's kind of what we're seeing uh, a slaughterhouse has been made obviously he's got a statue out uh tech on the way are we going to see meat wagons in this game it's a possibility we usually do, but at this point in the game, it might be too late to really use them effectively. Uh, <laughs> these defended footmen are just absolutely hilarious. You can see like one guy chasing three fiends. Oh man. But what can you do? Well, if you undefend your footman and try to run him away, that might work, but no, he's going to die. So, so well. Uh, but again, you know, human wants to buy time. He's teching up. He's got a way later tech. He just needs to buy time uh, and just stop the, the undead from getting mass amounts of experience and not, you know, screwing over his economy. And if he does that, which he's doing that pretty well, then he's in a pretty good spot. Uh, but that doesn't mean the undead's out of the game yet. The undead has a lot of ways to get into these bases with destroyers, uh, with meat wagon pushes, just straight up having a nice army. You can win just by having a better army, higher level heroes. But right now, what we're gonna see is that the ghouls, they're coming back to the main base. They're saying, all right, time to return wood. We might, you know, we might die here soon. So may as well go ahead and do that and defend our base because we're probably gonna need to block this area, this little area off right there, prevent guys running in towards our acolytes. That's what we ha saw kind of happen, but the human said, well, I don't really have the army to go into this base, so I'm just gonna, you know, make the undead come back to his base. And and that's a pretty good tactic. If you can't go into a base, just showing up is usually enough to actually force the undead back and to do some kind of defensive maneuver there. Tier 3 coming up for the undead right now. That's a pretty good thing for him because he really wants to pick up that orb, but he doesn't want to have to run his acolytes away right now. He doesn't have enough gold for that orb of... Uh, Corruption and he needs the orb of corruption. It's 275 gold. He's at 200 305 He's going to have to run units around and he's gonna have to start making things such as the destroyer upgrade or destroyer form Research these are all important things and he's just not able to mine gold right now as well as making acolytes because those guys Kind of important using a ziggurat here to block those guys off Unfortunately also gonna block off this acolyte here He's not quite getting microed as well as he needs to be and we can just see in this whole fight It's basically not really a fight where we're seeing lots of uh army versus army we're seeing this army trying to suicide into these units 
that are working. It's just saying, let's disrupt the disruption play. It's nothing more and nothing less. And it's working fairly well. Uh, the undead player is going to have to evacuate his base to chase down Footman. He's going to have to go back as well here fairly soon so that he can actually pick up and buy that Orb of Corruption, which he's going to want to have. And he's getting towards that uh, 60 food. He's going towards the push for the Destroyers, which could do a lot of damage. Uh, do we see any kind of... Well, the human player is going for level or tier 3 right now. As you can see, going teching straight to Castle. Doesn't have any workshops. Does have, I believe, a blacksmith and a lumber mill. Indeed, going for Masonry uh, level 2, he's got tier 1 on the Masonry Research, and he's going to go back in for another push. He's got pretty much infinite mana at this point because he has Brilliance or level 1, 2 Mantles of Intelligence, as well as a Sobe Mask, which means that reason mana is just, I mean, just look how fast it's going up. Uh, he can basically cast as many Water Elementals as he wants, and he probably will. So the question now becomes, where is that Orb of Corruption? It's on the Death Knight. The Death Knight runs much faster than the Lich does, so it's a good idea to go ahead and do that. Another nice thing that we're seeing Checky go ahead and do here is going for these mid-creeps. The four mid-creeps in the middle of the map, they're the orange turtles here, uh, these camps, they drop really, really good battle consumable items that can absolutely turn the tide when it's hero versus hero. And also, at this point in the game, you have to kind of wonder, can you do any enough? can you do enough damage to the human base-wise, economy-wise, to make it worth going for it? I would say it's arguable. Uh, maybe the answer is no. In fact, and the human can certainly do enough damage to you if you're trying, and that's really the big reason. If the human would stay at his base and fight you, then you could probably, you know, make a pretty good case for staying there. Going to see a bolt surround on the Death Knight. He's going to go ahead and try to break free. Not going to be able to quite able to do that, but if that Lich can get there and pass that Potion of Invernability, he would have been able to get out, but not quite fast enough. Again, the Lich moves really slow. But the TP comes out. The Death Knight is okay, but it's 350 gold down, and he really didn't want to have to spend that gold. He does have the two Potions of Invernability. Each one of those are the long ones. They're the 15 second ones so we probably won't see him buying another tp just yet he'll say we'll definitely see him passing one of these over to the death knight and now he just needs to push that hero advantage and that's why he was creeping the middle of the map he's got three three these are important levels if he can keep pushing the hero advantage, get up to 5-5, five, five, that may be his best chance at this point because the human does not have high level heroes and the human does not have the ability to creep very quickly and this is the advantage that the human or the undead player can really push for right now. But we're definitely going to start seeing mass dragon hawks coming out for the human player. Now that is an interesting play, an interesting move as well. Uh, they kind of confuse me though because these, here, these units, they're good and all... They're, I mean, they're okay and all. Uh, he actually did go for a TP. I am a little bit surprised by that, but that's certainly not a bad move. And it makes sense as well if he is really concerned about his base being put under attack. Uh, he absolutely cannot afford right now to lose that base. The human player, however, can afford to buy some time to creep, and that is going to be the kind of issue that the undead player has to deal with. Um, going straight into the base, he's got the destroyers morphed, he's ready to push. If he can take out these towers pretty quickly, then he can actually force the human player back and unable to creep. And that is going to mean that the human has to fight against higher level undead heroes uh, in a not so favorable position. And that could absolutely spell victory for the undead player. As you can see, that plan has worked flawlessly. Here come the militia. The militia have already been hurt pretty bad. Will we see Webb? Webb is absolutely out, and this is going to be some focus fire going on to the Archmage, who's getting fairly low. He's going to be forced to retreat out of the battle. Meanwhile, the Death Knight's taking a lot of punishment, but he does have a Ring of Regeneration, and he pops that Potion of Invernability. The Mountain King is going to go down. This is looking really dire for the human, despite how well he has played this game up to this point. He simply got outplayed on the experience level. He may be... In my opinion, I would say he went, I would go as far as to say that he simply did not take enough advantage of the fact that he could have crept, kind of teched too fast, didn't get any kind of an army, let the undead have free map control, and when you give an undead free map control on a map with lots of creeps, and the undead knows how to make advantage of that, as we've seen, getting high level heroes, controlling the map, doing good scouting, and keeping your, yourself protected from the human every time that he tries to go into your base, that just spells defeat. I mean, you can't fight this undead when he has these level heroes. He has 3-3 plus on his heroes, and you don't. Your little one level one mountain king is going to die instantly. And that's what we saw. Really, Hawk maybe should have tried to creep some more. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't really know what the answer is, but that was game number six. That was the final game of the show match. And I know some of you guys are getting sick of the show match. So I know it was a long one, but that's it. That's all the games. So we're going to do a nice 43 minute game tomorrow, I believe. Uh, something like that. So I think you guys will enjoy that. You've kind of been winning along the game. So we'll see that then. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> That was creepy. That was really creepy. <laughs>